Hey guys, I've got a kiln opening finally. It's been a while that I've been working on these because I'm filming everything. Like, so I can, whatever you ask me, um, like whatever you like the best, I will put together a video on how to glaze it. So let me know in the comments. But um, anyway, I fired this kiln um, higher to a higher temperature than I normally do because it wasn't hitting like a six. So we programmed it higher in the hopes to hit, um, to hit the actual true six and it, this shelf actually hit a seven. So, um, so we'll see what happens. I'm a little nervous, but, um, all right. So I took, well, we'll do this one first. This is on B mix and I did three times pearl white of course. And then on top of that, I did two stroke and coat colors, which were moody blue and teal next time. And I love the moody blue. Like I love the depth of that blue, which I got uh, from Mugwort's Mugwort Art Craft. I love her channel and she loves moody blue. Actually, this combo might be like a version of hers. So shout out to Mugwort Artcraft. I hope I'm saying it right. But so you've got those, the base of pearl white three times. You've got the two stroke and coat colors that are random. So I did a like, um, I just did like random drips of, of both actually. Uh, the moody blue and then the teal next time. And then on top of that, I went over it with sandstone two times um of sandstone or maybe one i think it's two times um but then on the outside i did snow to about here oh no about here i did snow to about here because as we know pearl white is a major runner especially combined with other glazes so the snow will prevent these heavy runny glazes from running onto the shelf. Um, so it's just a continua continuation of these glazes. But I really like how like, <clears throat> how that came out like on the outside. Can you see, let's see. Oh my gosh, that's so pretty. I will say I'm getting pinholes with any piece I peeked. Any piece that has that moody blue are getting like little pinholes everywhere. I don't know if you can see, they're really small, but they're like, do you see them? I believe that maybe I put the um, moody blue too thick. That's my guess. So my plan is to refire, just put it back in because sometimes that has helped me just eliminate any pinholes. Or sometimes I'll sand those little holes down, like I'll sand them down and then maybe even dot a little bit with like pearl white, just a tad and throw it back in. That'll be an experiment. So there you have that. These are, this is like my regular speckled buff pearl white combination. And I have a video on how I made a bunch of these. You'll see them later in the kiln uh, opening. Uh, but that's just black underglaze wiped back. And the pearl white, some of these I did put um, honey flux on the very bottom to see what happened. What would, what would happen with the pearl white on top of the honey flux? It's just, it's so pretty. Okay, so there's that. Um, this is a refire. Again, I went a little nutty with the moody blue. Um, yeah. 
So this is this was a refire. It was an, an initial um, peacock technique plate that you can see underneath. That was the initial with a different um, stroke and coat blue and teal next time was the original like design and it didn't move at all on top of pearl white. So I just added like a ton of um, moody blue. What did I do? Moody blue and then sandstone and one more layer of pearl white. Interesting. So that's just a refire. This is also a refire because I, this is um, Honeyflex and uh, Burt Lester, Iron Lester, sorry. Honeyflex, Iron Lester. And it didn't have enough on the first go round. So I added more Honeyflex and more Iron Lester. How pretty is that combination? Like it's simple and pretty on BMX. Honestly, I just, I love that. It's simple and just like delicious. Like look at the bottom, like where that color, where it kind of pools. It's just such a pretty little combination and it's pretty easy. Um, these are also that same combination, honey flux and iron luster, a good amount too, three times of each. But on these, I went to like here with the iron luster, actually maybe even a little like to about here with the iron luster. Look how much it ran. What I love the most are the striations like around the handles. So pretty. Oh my God, it's just so pretty. Love these. I'm so glad I did these because I wasn't going to. I was trying to be profound in all of my combos this time around. Like, why do I do that? Sometimes simplicity is the like, best and prettiest. So not everything has to be like, oh my God, amazing. Cause simple is amazing. Okay, these are more interesting. Wow. So these are more pearl white. And in the inside it's honey flux and pearl white. This like, I don't know what happened there. Oops, I'm shaking. But these came out good. These are like just nice to have around like to give gifts in a rush. Like I always come down here to get like gifts, you know, for closings or whatever. Another one of these. The honey flux and the pearl white. I love it. Uh-oh, that's not a good sound. Um, this didn't do well. And I don't know why it stuck. I kiln washed it. We'll have Matt help me. So the, again, this is the um, moody blue. It like maybe i applied it too thick it's moody blue and pearl white and it's like all pinholey and like and, and look at it like didn't maybe i didn't put enough of the pearl white on or it crawled i don't really know like what happened there maybe it just doesn't like this clay body i don't know but I think I'm definitely gonna refire this and next time I think I'm just gonna add a whole bunch of honey flux and see what happens. Cause it would have been a really cool mug, you know? So that's not a good success. All right, so 
This was not supposed to be black. Look at that. Wow, this was like the galaxy combination, which had obsidian. This is on speckled and it stuck. It's on speckled buff. And it was two times obsidian with two times, um, what's the sparkly glaze? Two times, um, two times obsidian. It'll come to me. Um, it's like a sparkly glaze. And then I did like Merlot, seaweed. I'm just surprised. I think because this shell fired to like over a seven. Look at, it might've even been like a seven and a, over a seven, like a seven and a half. That's that, yeah. Whoops, I might have overfired. I definitely overfired. Ugh, cosmic tea dust. Wow. That stinks. This was the obsidian cosmic tea dust, smoky Merlot, seaweed. And I spent like so long on these too, which is like ridiculous. But hey, it is what it is. You can see a little bit of the color, but I think when you fire at a hotter temp, you lose like the, the vibrancy of the color. Like you can see um, some of it shine through here. If you really look close. Oh my God, I should follow the message though and just like let it go and breathe deep. Deep breath. <sighs> okay, it's kind of hard, but they'll grow on me later. Oh my God. Wow. The kiln was too hot. So this is Black Walnut by uh, Mako that I was trying for the first time with a decal that I, I have a new Cricut. That thing is so addicting. <laughs> so I printed out all these like vinyl things and um, it like, I don't know, it didn't come out good. But that's an interesting glaze, the uh, black walnut. It bubbled though, like it, it didn't do well on the inside. Hmm. Yeah, I definitely overfired this kiln. So lesson learned. Um, see, wow though. Yeah, I'll have some grinding to do, but see, this is the, um, this is the moody blue and honey flux. I like that. I mean, so that came out good. You know what's interesting? I'm putting it all together. I went way lighter on the moody blue on this piece. So I bet you my intuition was correct in saying that the other pieces that I applied it way too thick with that moody blue. Had I not, it would have come out more like that. Okay, I like it. Moody Blue for the win with Honey Flux. You can do so much with Honey Flux. It's like a safe glaze, I feel like, for layering. Another one of my, huh, Honey Flux and Iron Luster. It's interesting. It's almost like a green at the top. does stick around the handles. I know this and I always try to be really careful. But you know, you can't help it sometimes, especially when your kiln's firing to like 
8 million degrees. That is so beautiful, though. Wow. So, like, look at that. Look at the difference. On the Like, this has more of, like, a richer color. So, this was on the top shelf, and this was on the middle shelf, which tends to get hotter. It's just amazing the difference, be, like, between heat what heat can do to glazing. Another thing I did was when I loaded this, we did an experiment of like loading it in such a way that I was super mindful about like keeping it even throughout the shelves, even throughout. So like the heat was distributed evenly. Like, like the first shelf had, approximately I measured like 10 pounds of clay plus the shelf right and so like and then on the shelf above that I tried to even it out so like the mass was like equal throughout so it, I guess it makes a difference this was uh Matt suggested we try this because my kiln is like weird so yeah so this is pearl white Fire hotter, I believe. You can tell because the color changes. It's all good information. Oh boy. Okay. So check this out. Oh, I like it. Kind of. Let's see. So this is um another cricket design that I printed out and you have to be super careful with these designs because like the lines are so fine like you need time and patience if you want to do intricate like lines like that but regardless I did this with black underglaze and then I waxed it these are just stamps that I had stamped in when it, I made the pot so um That came out good. My little, if you can't tell, um, I do like to meditate and just be zen. Um, but so this combo is um, three times reactive red as a base by Spectrum. And then underneath that, I did kimchi by Spectrum. Just to see what would happen. And on the inside, I went over that with one good coat of pearl white. Just to see what would happen. I like it. I like the inside better. Oh, and I did wax ab like above this so this wouldn't run down. You can kind of tell that the wax stopped the glaze from running there. Okay. Okay, this I just did a video on I just did a video on this combination and look how this came out this is the three times chun plum as a base with three times seaweed staggered with a thick um, with a rim of black aventurine and then globby oatmeal underneath it and look how much that ran. Again, my kiln was hot. So um, there was someone that had sent me a message on Facebook last night who followed my video that I just made on this combination. And it came out like super, like, I don't think it's bad, but it didn't come out like this. It didn't run like this. So I honestly think it, there wasn't enough glaze applied and it was the 
uh, kiln wasn't hot enough because when it's really hot, it's going to run and give you like, you know, look at those striations though. Michelle Dickey, I cannot wait for you to see this because she, you just did this combo too. I don't know if you fired it yet. So anyway, oh my God, I'm just in love with it. Look at that. Don't worry, I can grind that, or Matt can grind that. Wow, that's a cool hand warmer mug. I'm really happy with how that came out. So all in all, that's why I wanted um, to make sure my, my, before the kiln wasn't firing hot enough. So I'd rather over fire by axing a few pieces and get mainly the rest of the kiln will come out like, oozy and drippy and like amazing. So this is again, honey flux with um, that blue, moody blue and a lighter, lighter coat of it. What a pretty, what a pretty combo. That was so easy to do. Again, I have filmed everything basically. So, um, oh no, this is kind of not what I expected, but I want, <laughs> this was a flopped pot anyway, so whatever. Um, it's on speckled buff and I wanted to try satin, a satin matte white that I have. So I only did two coats of it. And you can see where the third coat is, coat is like right here. It's probably thicker application. That has more of what I'm going for. Obviously, this is a little dull. I think had I done three coats, it would have been like, basically it would have looked like snow, but matte. It's rustic. Ah, we'll figure it out. I might reuse it. Um, wow, too hot, Kim got too hot. This is just Honey Flux on Speckled Buff. I did this combo on another piece a few months ago and it was like not, it was way brighter, like a way brighter color. Can always refire, so. I bet you anything that Matt will like this one. I, I bet you he will. Let's see if he does. Okay. Be here now. Yep, this ran. That's one of those other ones. It's funny how the ones that take you forever because you overthink it come out like crap. You know, where it's the ones where you're just free and having fun come out awesome. <sighs> All right. Okay. Okay. Wow. What do you think of that? So cool. Huh. So this one, I'm trying to remember, this was a base of Arctic blue. So I have so much Arctic blue and I never use it. I don't really love it. Like by itself, it, it came out like that. And again, it fired super hot, so, it, you know, some of it almost turned like a green, like a, it's weird. Where it's lighter, okay, I applied it lighter here. I always do around the base, so it came out more green maybe. But anyway, so I did the whole thing in Arctic Blue three times, and then I did the moody blue 
like I would stroke and coat uh, the peacock technique, like kind of like that, like in U's or V's around the rim of the moody blue. And then pretty sure I did sandstone, believe it or not. Two times a sandstone in pearl white. I have to go back and check because I don't see the sandstone, but I'm, this could have just been pearl white on top. I'll double check. But regardless, um, that's really beautiful. I'll get you the exact combo. There, there is like a small pinhole where the moody blue got a little thick. Not a bad, bad one, but it's so pretty. Like I'm obsessed with it. Oh my gosh, I'm obsessed. Okay, okay. Got to put it down. Okay, this is an interesting experiment. Don't really like it, but I tried doing something different and did like a swirl of swirl of the moody blue, swirl of the teal next time of the stroking coats in the center, and then went over it with pearl white. Oh, it might grow on me. Somebody will like it. I'm not sure it's worth refiring or not, but there is a pinhole here which is weird because I did a slow cool, which usually eliminates those. Um, okay, now this. Oh, wow. This is kind of crazy. Huh. I think I like the outside better. So, um, this was another peacock technique. This one had blue midnight. Okay, so I did, I did the, I know what I did. I did the, um, I did the, the, a different thing. I did like a pattern with the uh, flux, like I normally do, like the U's, but I carried the pattern like all the way to the center. Like I it just carried it on through. And then the dots were Blue Midnight by Amico. Um, Teal Next Time, Leapin' Lizard, and I think, oh, and uh, I think that's it um, for the stroke and coats. And then I went over it with two times of the sandstone and then one time of pearl white for good measure. It's really interesting, like, what happened there. Like, I went all the way, all the way to here with the dots and everything. Um, and then on the outside, it was just sandstone. And the flux, like a little bit of flux on the rim. Look at that like pink color like that came through. I videoed this, me glazing this as well. So that's cool. I'm not sure if I am like wowed by it, but it's, it's definitely cool. I don't know about you, but like, I have to like snuggle with like my pots for a while. Like something I don't like today, I'll like it. I'll love it even in like a month from now. And the sandstone is just like gorgeous. With the flux and the pearl white. I'm sorry, I just have to show you one more time. Look at that, you guys. Just trying to get it to focus. Wow, it's 
like so pretty. I think I'm just going to do this combo. Oh, love it. Okay. Next up. These. Oh, these are just ruined. It like hurts to look at them. So let's just move on. Let's just carry on. We'll, we'll move on. I have another like load to glaze too. So that will be fun. Oh, pinhole central. Look at that plate. Holy, holy, holy pinholes. I think I know why. Because my pearl white was so thick. I actually thinned it out after I glazed this. But that's okay, because this was a tester. So guys, look at this plate. See how even it is? This is coming soon. My husband figured out a way to make perfect, uniform, quick plates out of a slab, on the wheel. It's better than anything I've seen on the market. Um, way better than, than uh, GR Pottery Forms. Like, I'm sorry, I, no disrespect, but those are good, they're decent, I have it. But he like invented this amazing like plate making thing. And now I can like literally make sets of plates in like one plate's like 20 minutes, that's it. Um, and it has a built in foot and everything. So, but the glaze came out like crap, that's okay. But more on these plates soon. That's all I'm gonna say about that. But I'm really proud of what he created. Beautiful form, which is hard to see because the glaze sucks, but. Okay, I think I have another one in there somewhere. I swear, like Matt's like a genius. Like, I'm not just saying that, he kind of is. Okay, oh my God, I love this. Oh. I made this for me because like I said, I like to like sit and like zen out sometimes. I have like a meditation nook in my bedroom. It's pretty cool. I should show it to you guys. Um, and so I just love that. It reminds me, it just spoke to me like again off the cricket and then like just kind of like, I don't know like meditating or something on a full moon night in snowy New Hampshire, right? Isn't that cool? I think it's cool if you like that sort of thing. They have all kinds of different like designs. I'm totally gonna use this from now on as my new coffee mug. Okay, this, I don't know. This was a new combo. Ugh. It's all right. Um, Teal next time. So straight up like on the clay, no uh, base of anything. So it's the teal next time around the rim. And then it was candy apple red stroke and coat. And... Um, dandelion stroke and coat and then I went over it with amber topaz which I'll probably never do again someone might like it I could refire that it's just not my thing I could you know what I bet I could re refire it and make it something cool but that's that um, what else do we have? Another one of these. Honey Flux. 
and iron luster. Interestingly, that was on the lower shelf, which tends to fire um, cooler. My middle shelves tend to fire the hottest. All right, let's do the last one. Interesting. Last shelf. I'm just using up some colored clay that I have. So I don't know, I went back to like being a teenager and made an ashtray <laughs> uh, and just put clear over it. I didn't know what else to do with this. So it's kind of pretty though, the colored clay. Isn't it? When you glaze it with a clear, it like really, this is raw, you can see it makes it pop a little bit more. It's had orange and purple and blue. I gotta use it up before it dries out. It's kind of interesting. All right, here's another plate that was like super artsy. <laughs> I think I went a little crazy, like, wow, the pearl white is like, not, I don't know. It's not like doing well on this clay body, but we'll, we'll figure that out later. Um, here's another plate mold though. I wish you could see it better. Um, see how flat that is though? I wish, um, you can see. It's just so cool. So this is another one that we are experimenting with. Same plate mold as the other one, except this foot is a little different. That's built into the mold. Again, it took like 20 minutes to make this plate. So the combo is, um, and again, I got this from Mugwort Art Craft, but I think she uses like a dark reddish clay which comes out way better than, than I think the, on the speckled buff. But this is just pores of like, like I poured um, raspberry, oh, sorry, lavender mist by Mako. I did a pour and then like swirled it around. Then I did a pour of um, Arctic blue. Oh, I did a pour of um, pink opal because, um, uh, I wanted to use a glaze that I haven't used since I got it because I don't like it and I don't really like know what to do with it. Lisa Finkel created a Facebook group. So I was going to post this in there because I used, actually I used Arctic Blue too, which I haven't used in forever because I, I don't know what to do with them. I don't really love them. So thank you, Lisa, for pushing me to use stuff. Um, so yeah. So after the Arctic blue pour course, I went in, added some moody blue, and then I covered it in sandstone and then pearl white. It's kind of interesting. It's more of like an art kind of piece. That's something that you could like put on a stand or something. Maddie's molds, right? <coughs> um, oh, save the best for last. So I made, um, this is a new combo, holly green and holly green and ki cactus, <laughs> kiwi, textured kiwi fruit. Two times holly green, two times tex textured kiwi fruit, both spectrum glazes on speckled buff. This came out like exactly how I had envisioned it. I saw this um, on some of the groups and wanted to try it. Wow, I really like this a lot. I really, really do. Look at 
Look at that. I did get a little drab. That's really pretty. Honestly, it's prettier in person than on the camera. It looks really good on, on B-Mix as well. Again, this is a dark speckled clay body. Dark, uh, sorry, more like a light brown. But like, you know, I eat my oatmeal out of one of these or ice cream at night. So I just have three of those. Um, and that's it. So that's it for this kill mode. Um, let me know if there's anything like you want to see more of or, um, you know, which ones you like the most or whatever. You know where to reach me. So um, thanks, guys, and I will see you soon. Bye.